organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, opening day announced. Find out when the new University of Iowa Stead Family Children's Hospital becomes open to the public. And later, an update on the old capital. Find out what's being changed coming up. We take a look into what went wrong for the Hawkeyes against U of I on Saturday and what both Indiana and Iowa have to do tonight to end their losing streaks. And also we take a look into the indoor track and field team before they start preparing for the Big Ten Championships. Temps were in the 70s the past few days, but will this continue? Find out more in weather coming up. From Kinnick to the Old Capitol, we have the latest in Iowa City news. Don't go anywhere. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us for another live edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Becca Scadden. The new University of Iowa Stead Family Children's Hospital has announced an opening date. The new facility will open Saturday, February 25th. Some areas that open Saturday include the Discharge Lobby and Main Pharmacy, the Pediatric Cardiac ICU, and the UI Dance Marathon Pediatric Cancer Center. Other areas of the hospital will open at a later date. Daily Iowan reporter Jenna Larson reports that the later opening date will allow the hospital to complete device integration, ensure that areas are ready for patients, and to train staff properly. Firefighters responded to a house fire yesterday. Iowa City officials say crews were dispatched at 4.48 p.m. to 120 North Dodge Street. They said the fire occurred in the living room of the house and no injuries occurred. The house sustained $20,000 worth of damages. The UI announces it will be coal-free by 2025. Daily Iowa Metro reporter Charlie Peckman has more. University of Iowa President Bruce Harold announced that the university plans on being coal-free by the year 2025. This is part of seven sustainability goals that were established by the Office of Sustainability back in 2008. Since 2008, the university has cut down its dependence on coal by 60%, and by the year 2020, the University of Iowa plans on being 40% reliant on renewable energy sources, such as the Miscanthus crop, which is sourced locally, as well as oat holes from the Quaker Oats Company. The University of Iowa continues on its path to environmental sustainability. You can read Charlie's full story on the front page of today's copy of The Daily Iowan. Dimly lit streets across Iowa City have sparked concern amongst students about their safety as they walk across campus at night. The University of Iowa student government is working alongside UI facilities management and the city of Iowa City to provide better lighting. UISG student safety liaison Sarah Boltzma told Daily Iowan reporter Eliana Novich, quote, you should be able to walk home at night to wherever you're living and not be concerned and feel unsafe about your surroundings because of poor lighting, end quote. Some areas amongst concern are portions of Washington Street, Church Street, and Bloomington Street. The old Capitol building on the Pentecrest is the center of the University of Iowa, and it's had a different look this year throughout the entire school year. The old Capitol has been under construction for renovations. Daily Iowa TV reporter Noah Gowdy went to find out why the project has yet to be complete. Throughout this school year at the University of Iowa, the old Capitol building has been covered in scaffolding and construction workers. Many students are wondering what is actually going on with the building that stands at the center of the campus. I don't really know what they're doing to it, like what changes are actually being made, but it has been going on for a while and I have I've found myself wondering why. I spoke with senior construction project manager Kirsta Scranton about what renovations were being done to the old Capitol. We replaced a lot of the wood and siding up on the, uh, the cupola and the bell tower and the attic tower sections. Construction on the old Capitol began back in July of 2016 with hopes of it being done by early December. Management has come out and said that roadblocks have occurred, pushing the deadline back to April of 2017. With the deadline being extended to April, some are wondering what the cause of the extension comes from. There's 1,100 pieces of intricate wood carvings that have to be done, and it's taking him or the company that's doing the carving a lot longer than what we expected. Kirsta and her team are hopeful that the project will be completed in April before the seniors graduate. Reporting from the old Capitol building in downtown Iowa City, Noah Gowdy, Daily Iowa TV. Well, I know I for one really enjoyed the warm weather last weekend and the past few days, and I'm really hoping you're going to tell us we have more to look forward to. But I'm joined by Sydney Zatz here now to tell us what we have to look forward to this upcoming week. 
Sydney? Well, back up tomorrow, we can see temps in the 70s, but unfortunately, we might have to put the flip-flops away for a little bit. It's going to cool down, so let's head over to the weather studio to find out what we can expect. It looks like these past few days of summer, temperatures are coming to a cool. Tuesday morning, you can expect to see temps in the low 40s of partly cloudy skies. In the afternoon, we see temps hit nearly 60 degrees as the sun shines through those partly cloudy skies we saw in the morning. In the evening, temps will drop to the low 50s and we will see clear skies. Wednesday morning, we'll start temps off in the low 40s, but don't worry, we should see a high of 73 throughout Wednesday. Thursday, we will see a high of 56, so temps will start to cool down from there. Throughout the weekend, we can see average attempts in the low 20s to high 40s and throughout the day in the evening. We can expect temps to stay in the range of the low to mid 20s. We'll see these temps mixed with some partly to mostly cloudy skies and keep an eye peeled for Friday as we could see some thunderstorms. There's also a possible chance of snow over the weekend. Now, if you're wondering about a heat wave next week, it looks like temperatures will be staying in the mid 40s to low 50s, which if you ask me, that's better than trekking out to class through all the snow and slush. Becca, back to you. Fetal tissue could be at risk for being outlawed in facilities across Iowa if a proposed bill passes the Iowa Senate. Fetal tissue is material from aborted fetuses used similarly to stem cells by scientists. The Republican-led Human Resource Subcommittee of the Iowa Senate approved the piece of legislation last week. The legislation would prohibit the use of fetal tissue when conducting medical research. On the opposite side of the issue, Democratic Senator Joe Bolcom told Daily Iowan reporter Sarah Stortz that the bill would bring huge damage to research done at the universities in Iowa. He said, quote, our universities are doing great research with fetal tissues, but whatever research would have to stop. It could end research for cures and treatments, end quote. Bolcom said that passing the bill would be an economically bad decision. The Iowa Senate allowed a $118 million budget cut on the state's cultural trust fund. The cut was made in late January. Following the decision, a group of protesters rallied in front of the Iowa State Capitol. UI International Writing Program Director Christopher Merrill told Daily Iowa reporter Sarah Stortz, quote, it's going to make it much harder for arts institutions, particularly in rural parts of the state, due to jobs, end quote. Well, I know we had a big weekend for Hawkeye sports, and I want to hear what's coming up next week, guys. Thanks, Becca. That's right, the men's game obviously did not go well for the Hawks, and with just two home games left this season, they do not have a lot of time left to redeem themselves. Yeah, and their first opportunity will be tonight against Indiana. But moving away from basketball for a second, the men's track and field team ended their indoor regular season this past weekend. That's right, and the team looks determined and ready going into the Big Ten Championships. With more is Will Silverstein. The Hawkeyes track and field team closed out the 2016-2017 regular season at this week's Iowa Open. The Hawkeyes' full depth was on display as they battled regional rivals Northern Iowa. As the Hawkeyes and the Panthers squared off for the third time this season, Iowa used some of their depth to their advantage. One of the best performances of the meet came from the duo of Vinny Saucer and O'Shea Wilson in the 60-meter run. You know, we need our sprinters to show up this week at the Big Ten meet. So, um, you know, O'Shea's one of those super talented guys. I mean, he, he's a guy that when he puts on the uniform, he's, he's a totally different animal. And, and uh, you know, he's put up one of the best jumps in the country. He's currently ranked sixth, I think, in the, in the long jump. Um, but he's also a great sprinter. He's one of our best sprinters. Now we got a great chance to win. It's going to be probably a, a three-team, three to four-team battle to win the championship. Uh, so everybody's got to be on their A game. Everybody's got to be, you know, going out and doing everything they can to make a final. And then once we have, uh, you know, a lot of athletes in the final, anything can happen. Even though the University of Iowa arrested some of the runners, their backups put it on encouraging performances heading into the Big Ten Championships. Reporting from the University of Iowa Recreation Building, this is Will Silverstein, Daily Iowan TV Sports. As the indoor season closes, the outdoor track and field season kicks off with a home meet late in April. Now moving back to men's basketball and looking back to Saturday's game. The defeat against Illinois was a tough one to swallow, but there were a couple of key players that were able to make it such a close game. Olivia Corbett was there to tell us more. Although a heartbreaker here against Illinois, it was another standout game for Big Ten's leading scorer Peter Jack, who came away from tonight's game with a total of 16 points and 10 rebounds. And let's not forget about his three-pointer in the first that built Iowa's lead 22-16 bringing the crowd to their feet, followed by an Illinois timeout. Trailing only two points behind Jock, freshman Tyler Cook made his contribution, scoring the first bucket of the game and adding onto the scoring streak the Hawkeyes saw early in the first. Cook also gave the Hawks their biggest lead after making two free throws. 
I felt like I was getting the shots that I wanted to get, you know, in, in the lane. I think it was like five or seven, something like that. So, you know, I was obviously trying to get the ball more um, down the stretch, but, you know, when you're out, you know, you, you just got to, you know, try to encourage the rest of the guys. So. When coming away from a loss like this, it's all about improvement. Jack may have led in points, but what stuck out to him after the game was what went wrong. I mean, it was some sloppy plays, um, starting with me, and I had that turnover, which landed up with a layup on that side. Uh, that was a huge turnaround, and then uh, we didn't really execute as a team in the end. Okay, what were bad things? Well, you know, 55% in the second half. Uh, and, you know, there were some other mistakes that we made, and then some mistakes that individuals made that we want to try to make sure they don't make again, that they learn from it. As the game against Indiana approaches, Jack Cook and the rest of the team will hopefully find a way to come out on top after the tough fall to Illinois. Reporting inside Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Olivia Corbett with Daily Iowan TV Sports. The Hawkeyes remain home tonight as they face Indiana at 8 p.m., looking to turn their season around. Moving on to tonight's game, one team's losing streak will finally end as Indiana has lost their last four games and Iowa has lost their last three. That's right, Taylor, and not only will the Hoosiers have to worry about Peter Jock, but the Hawkeyes will have to stop top three-point shooter James Blackman Jr. Blackman ranks first in the league in three-pointers, followed in the Big Ten by Jock. The Hawks have a lot to prove against this once top 25 team tonight, and the team is done with their excuse of just being a young team. You want to play your capabilities. Uh, individually and collectively and uh, you know play intelligently at the right times and you know and obviously have some success you know so just cut down on your mistakes and, and improve in areas maybe we've not been as good throughout the course of the year continue to get better and, uh, and watch some guys individually really step up I mean obviously it's that's what we hear everyone talking about is these guys can be really good. They're going to be really good in the future. But um, like you said, we want to take it. We want the future to be our next game. We want to be good now, not wait for something that's supposed to happen. So um, obviously we think about it, and, and it's in the back of our minds. But we just want to focus on us now and, and do everything we can do um, physically, mentally, to, to be the best we can be right now. And Because we know we can be good. We, we have shown glimpses of us being a really good team. We've also shown glimpses of us being uh, what you would call a young team, but we don't. We don't. It's too late in the season for us to be considered a young team. Um, we've got guys, a lot of freshmen that are playing and and are getting used to this style of play, and um, it's just something that we're trying to get accustomed to and, and figure out as soon as possible. Well, it'll be very interesting to see how the team plays, especially seeming that they've only played better with Jock. Okay. without him. That's a good point. Now, Jock only has two more regular season games before the Big Ten tournament to kind of redeem his season, so hopefully the team will be able to get this win for him and end their losing streak tonight. Tune in tomorrow for updates from the game tonight. Plus, get some updates from the softball team during their bye week. Becca, back to you. The University of Iowa is taking aim at black holes. Daily Iowa reporter Elise Kearns reports that recent findings show large collections of black holes near Earth. Experts at the university say these discoveries will help research and in the end, black holes are harmless. Due to their darkness and the fact light can't escape black holes, historically they have been hard and difficult to study. Scientists are hoping that the new findings will help research in learning more about our surroundings in the galaxy. And that's a wrap for this Tuesday edition of Daily Iowan TV. For all the latest Johnson County news, check out our website at dailyiowan.com and be sure, to be sure to pick up a copy of the Daily Iowan. Tune in every day this week at 8.30 for our live morning broadcast. For Daily Iowa TV, I'm Becca Scadden. Thanks for watching and have a great day, Iowa City.